And we have in front of us uh, what is universally recognized as the greatest uh, verse in the Bible because it contains the greatest news in the Bible. So much so that uh, John 3.16 has actually made itself in a lot of ways uh, into popular culture, often driven by passionate followers of Jesus. For example, if you've ever been to California, uh, you've been to, I hope, the greatest burger place uh, in the universe. I will not debate this. It's called In-N-Out Burger. And uh, the founders of In-N-Out Burger uh, many years ago now are such passionate followers of Jesus that they've actually placed on the underside of every one of the drinking cups, you can see it there, the reference, John 3.16. What I didn't know until uh, the research gave it to me this week was that uh, I have not personally shopped, you'll be glad to know, uh, in Forever 21, uh, but I love people that have. And uh, this store is also owned by Christians, and on many of the bags when you purchase something there, they also put the greatest verse in the Bible, uh, John 3.16. Now, uh, what has really driven this into the popular culture is the famous quarterback, so popular, what's his name? I think you know uh, Tim Tebow. And of course, he doesn't just put black under his eyes, he actually puts the Scripture reference, uh, John 3.16. This was uh, made such an impact on so many people, I guess, that don't shop at Forever 21 and don't eat at In-N-Out Burger, that uh, Wikipedia reports that uh, John 3.16 was referenced 186,000 times in the day after Tim Tebow appeared with that on his face. Uh, and uh, Google reports that John 3.16 shot to the top and remained there for several days as the number one search. Well, what is it that everyone's searching out? I think you uh, know the verse. I hope you know the verse. Uh, maybe you know portions of the verse. I was surprised this week I had a chance to go golfing, and I uh, said to the caddy, you know, I was kind of curious. I said, uh, have you ever heard of uh, the verse, uh, John 3.16? He attends a Jesuit university. He said he'd just written a paper trying to harmonize the four Gospels, and yet he didn't know what John 3.16 was. I kind of wonder if maybe everybody doesn't know the reference, but they don't know what it contains. Do you know what it contains? Because it's not the greatest verse in the Bible to you until you've made its message personal. Uh, let's say the verse together. I think uh, many of you know it. Lift up your voice and say it. I'm not even putting it on the screen. <clears throat> so many know it by memory. Let's say it. For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, New American Standard and New King James there say, His only begotten Son. It means His one and only Son. Again, for God so loved the world that He gave His only Son so that whoever believes in Him would not perish but have eternal life. Well, I've been thinking a lot about this, and uh, before I do uh, get into it, why it is the greatest verse in the Bible, I want to take a moment and pray. Now, just to be clear here, I was uh, uh, T-bowing long before it was uh, popular. And uh, let's, let's all humble ourselves and uh, let's uh, pray together. Father, we uh, bow before You in this moment because we are hopeful that uh, this greatest verse in all of the Bible could become fresh in its greatness to us right here and right now. Stir our hearts afresh with deep worship and appreciation for the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ and cause uh, some men and women uh, who are here uh, in this moment on one of our campuses bowing now as we pray, but they don't know uh, Him whom to know is life eternal, cause that transformation to happen in their heart as a result of what they hear now we ask in Jesus' name, amen. Now. Maybe you've been asking, uh, why is this the greatest verse in the Bible? That's good. Uh, maybe you've been asking, why is this? Maybe, 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 maybe you've been asking, is this the right? Um, uh, Twelve reasons, um, all of them right from this single verse. Um, here's the first reason, the first word for uh, God. Uh, God, see that? Uh, first word, most important word, uh, God. Uh, jot this down, uh, the greatest being the greatest being. Uh, this is the bullseye of ultimate reality. Uh, everything in the universe revolves around and shouts the reality uh, that there is a God. Uh, the galaxies uh, by the billions, the teeming uh, 
trillions of stars, the solar systems, each one uh, revolving around that star, and, and the God who spoke it all into existence. I, if you've been around Harvest, you know that I like to research the size of uh, the universe. This is one of the things that blew me uh, away this week. Um, scientists uh, now say uh, that the actual universe, which they cannot measure, is to the known universe. For years in science class, you were told about the known universe. How many people remember hearing uh, in science class the known universe? Well, scientists now say that the actual universe is to the known universe as the known universe is to an atom, all right? And ever expanding and behind all of it, a God who spoke and the worlds were formed. I like this. Uh, Max Lucado says that the number one missionary in the universe is the universe. Psalm 19.1 says that the heavens are declaring the glory of God, that, that the universe itself is shouting, there's a God, there's a God. And John 3.16, of course, uh, begins with the existence of this God. Now, in uh, messages gone by, we've spent a lot of time on arguments for the existence of God. The cosmological argument is what I was just going through, the fact that uh, what exists shouts the reality of uh, some cause. Every effect must have a cause. Then the evidential argument, uh, the fact that uh, design shouts uh, a designer. And uh, if I were to take my watch and, and, and say to you, uh, well, this uh, watch uh, came from a, uh, an explosion in space, you would say, that seems uh, somewhat unlikely, but what if my watch was as big as this room? Well, still, but it couldn't come from an explosion. Well, what if my watch was as big as the state of Illinois? Could it come from an explosion then? Well, what if my watch was as big as, and as complicated as the United States of America or the planet Earth? Well, you say, it doesn't matter how big you make it, it still uh, would seem like it would be less likely to come from an explosion, and I agree. And if you agree, then you're uh, supporting the evidential argument for God's existence. Then the